Now, let's talk about some of the other functions of vitamin A. Many of you have heard the, the probably heard the kind of the old cliche, the vitamin A is important for the eyes. And it is. You can actually develop xerophthalmia, which is kind of a dryness in the eyes. It's a kind of a severity of dryness, and it can deteriorate your eyes, causing cloudy vision, and ultimately lead to blindness. So vitamin A is very, very important for eye function. And so not having adequate vitamin A, some people actually start to lose parts of their vision or lose elements within their eyes, so their vision becomes more and more poor over time. Other functions of vitamin A that are very rarely discussed Vitamin A helps to take cholesterol, right? Cholesterol, that evil substance, wink, wink, it's not really evil. We've talked about that too. But it converts your cholesterol, ladies, into estrogen. So without vitamin A, it's very hard for you to be able to produce your estrogen. Men, it's very hard for you to be able to produce your testosterone. So think about vitamin A as being necessary to help your cholesterol convert into those sex steroids important in growing kids because of sex differentiation, important in adults because women, you need your estrogen and men, you need your testosterone. So we've got another function here of vitamin A, which is in sex steroid hormone formation. We said eyes, we said regeneration of epithelial tissue. What are some of the other functions of vitamin A? One, arguably one of the biggest functions of vitamin A, let's make some room over here, is thyroid function. So let's talk, let's talk what I mean. So T4, T4 is inactive thyroid hormone. It doesn't work. It's inactive and it has to be converted into T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone. So, but before T3 can do its job, T3 has to stimulate a receptor on the surface of your DNA. So if we look at a cell, Okay, this is just my rudimentary drawing of a cell. At the core is the cell nucleus, and then you have the DNA. But on the surface of the nucleus of the cell, so or the ring around the nucleus is called a nuclear membrane. And embedded in that nuclear membrane, you have this receptor, and it's called a retinoic acid receptor. RAR for short, retinoic acid receptor. Now, for your thyroid hormone, your T3, to tell your metabolism to speed up, what do you need? You need T3 to connect with this receptor, this retinoic acid receptor, okay? It has to bind to that in order for your metabolism to be turned up. So without vitamin A, with, remember vitamin A forms that receptor, that's what retinoic acid is. Retinoic acid is a form of vitamin A in the body and it forms that nuclear receptor on the gene or on the nuclear membrane of the cell so that you can activate the genes to turn up the metabolism. So if you don't have adequate vitamin A, you're going to have a problem with your thyroid function. Now, concomitantly, there's a, there's a, a kind of a dual relationship with your thyroid you also, in order for you to make carotenoid and convert it into vitamin A, this process requires thyroid hormone. So think about this relationship here. If you have low thyroid, it can be caused by vitamin A deficiency. If you have low thyroid, it can cause vitamin A deficiency. So the question I have for all of you, and let's just do a quick poll of the room here. How many of you have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism? I'll just give a few minutes for some of the comments to come in. If you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, if you're taking a thyroid medication and you're willing to share that with us, just type in, yes, thyroid. Just, let's just see how many of you have actually had that happen or how many of you are struggling with that particular issue. Because part two to this question is, if you got a low thyroid, how many of you have actually had your vitamin A levels checked? So think about that. We said that vitamin A deficiency can cause poor functioning T3. Now, many of you have had your T3 checked. Your doctor generally will check your T3, your T4, your TSH, but how many of you have had your vitamin A checked to see that that T3 can even go to work and do its job? And, and, and concomitantly or, or vice versa, how many of you have had your vitamin A checked when your thyroid was low 
okay, as a potential reason as to why your thyroid hormone is not working. So maybe you have this perfect looking T3 result and you're being medicated, but nobody's bothered to check your vitamin A to see whether or not that medicine is actually going to be effective for you. Because, you know, I, I get this all the time. People come to me and they're on strong doses of thyroid medication and they're having heart palpitations, their hair's falling out, they're having hot flashes, anxiety, trouble sleeping because they're being over medicated. And the reason they're being over medicated is because the doctor keeps driving the dose because they keep having and manifesting the symptoms of low thyroid. And they're just saying, well, increase the dose, increase the dose. But the dose is increasing, but it isn't working. So they just keep increasing the dose. And so that comes with a lot of those different types of side effects, yet you're not getting the actual full metabolic function of the thyroid hormone itself. So it's very, very important that if you are on a thyroid medication, if you wanna ensure that your medicine's gonna work effectively for you without having to be overdosed over time, because that can be dangerous too, is insist and ask your doctor to check your vitamin A levels. And very, very important, and it's a very simple thing to do. I mean, it's not a hard test to run, it's just a matter of running it and seeing where you're at. And if you are a um, person that struggled with a lot of gut problems, right? Remember, what did I say? That you can eat, and maybe you're vegetarian. So like if you're vegetarian or vegan, you're not eating these really high pure vitamin A foods, but instead you're eating carotenoids in high doses. Well, you're limited to how much vitamin A that your gut's going to produce in a day. And remember that this conversion requires thyroid hormone, but it also requires protein. So again, if you're a vegetarian and you're not getting adequate protein, you could be setting yourself up for vitamin A deficiency that's going to make your thyroid hormone work less effectively. So it's one of those scenarios that you've got to dial it in. You've got to understand it. You require thyroid hormone and protein to convert carotenoids to vitamin A in your gut. And if you're not doing that because of a deficiency of protein or, or not getting enough protein or a deficiency in your thyroid hormone, those are two reasons why that might happen. Other reasons why it might happen, you might have an in inflammatory bowel uh, disorder like, like celiac disease would be the perfect example. If you have celiac disease where you're not going to be able to make that conversion as effectively because your gut's on fire. Or if you're eating foods that you're allergic to and those are damaging your GI tract and damaging your gut lining and making it harder for your gut to convert carotenoids into vitamin A, you can run into the same type of problem as well. So very, very important to come back and, and understand what this mechanism is so that you can, again, ask your doctor to really look at it in a little bit more detail. So again, vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. It requires your gallbladder to be in to be able to properly absorb it through the production of bile. If you don't have a gallbladder, you, you're going to want to consider some type of supplementation to support your digestion and absorption of vitamin A, like an ox bile based supplement. Um, so you need that to happen, right? And once it does happen, and if you're not, again, if you're eating enough or getting enough in your diet, but your gallbladder is part of the problem, you've got to support that. Once you have that, then these things can start to take place. You can start healing your skin, your urinary tract, your lungs, your GI lining, your mucosal membranes across and throughout your body eyes and eye function as well as sex steroid hormone formation so that's kind of the pathway of the importance of vitamin a hey don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here make sure you hit subscribe below and as always thanks for tuning in